I'm going to show you some of the different features of the pen tool and how the node tool can be used to tighten up line work. We'll two finger pinch to zoom into the nose first. And I'll select the regular pen tool. I'll go to the colour panel and select the ring. This one shows the line colour. I want to continue using this yellow gold colour, so I could drag the colour picker over my previous lines, or I could choose it from the recent colour swatches. Now I can tap to create straight lines and sharp nodes, or I can hold and drag to create curves and smooth nodes. If I'm coming out of a curve and I want a sharp corner, I can hold control on the command controller and change the smooth node to a sharp node. You might want to edit your curves afterwards. We can do this with the node tool. You can find it on the tools panel. I can use this tool to move and edit the nodes. If I tap a node, two small handles become available and I can drag them around to change the curve. I can also tap along the curve to create new nodes or I can delete unwanted nodes by selecting them and either pressing the delete icon on the context toolbar or at the bottom of the tools panel. I can also hold the curves themselves as well and pull them where I want them. The nodes act like anchors keeping each end of the line in place. Each node has a type. This square indicates a sharp node. I can convert this to a circular smooth node on the context toolbar. A smooth node has two handles that will always be opposite each other. However, I can hold option on the command controller and move them separately if I need to. This will change the node into a sharp node. I can drag to select multiple nodes and change the node types together. For example, I can change these sharp nodes into smooth nodes. There are a few other modes for the pen tool too. They can be found up on the context toolbar once the pen tool is selected. I can tap across to view the different modes or I can tap the word and open the drop down menu. Let's have a look at the smart mode next. Tapping in this mode places smart nodes, which result in flowing curves. It's really useful for quickly lining curved parts of a design. I'll end the curve by tapping deselect. When working with vector curves, we can change the appearance of the stroke afterwards. This stroke is thinner than the rest of the design, so I'll open the stroke panel and use the width slider to increase the width of the stroke. Let's move to another area to try out the next pen mode, the polygon mode. I'll switch the stroke style to dashed line for this example. This mode acts in the opposite way to the smart mode. It will only create straight lines and sharp nodes. So it's great to use if you don't want any curves at all. We can change the appearance of the dashed pattern by holding the numbers and dragging up and down to increase or decrease the values. We can also tap and input a specific number. I'll set the dash and the gap to 2 to match the other constellations in this design. I've also noticed that the curve is sitting above the stars, so I'll go to the Layers panel to reorder the layers. I have a lot of groups in this document and the thumbnails would help me to identify where I need to place the curve. If I press the panel options at the top, I can choose to show the group thumbnails. Now I can clearly see where I need to move my curve, so I'll hold it and drag it down the layer stack and release it beneath the star groups. For the last mode, we'll move to the top of the document. The line mode creates a straight line after the first node and automatically terminates the line after the second node. I'll change the stroke back to a solid line and reduce the width back to 3. Now I can create these lines quickly without having to deselect to end each curve. Once you've created your curve, you can go to the node tool and edit them with actions on the context toolbar. I'm going to create the eye using a circle, so I'll select the ellipse tool. I'll lock shift on on the command controller to perform proportional scaling, and also command to resize around the center. Then I'll double tap on the command controller and select convert to curves on the quick menu. This means the shape is now a curve. Now I want to break the curve where it goes over the eyelid. I've automatically switched to the node tool and I can tap to create nodes at the places where I want to break the curve and drag across to select them both. On the context toolbar I can choose break and my curve will be split at the selected nodes. You could also break your curves by having the knife tool selected 
and tapping along your curve to cut it with the scissor tool. Now I can switch to the move tool and see that we have created a separate curve. Like before, I'll tap the bin icon on the tools panel to delete it. Now I can quickly finish off the eye with the regular pen tool. Finally, I'll quickly show you how you can make your pen curves more dynamic. First, use any of the pen tool modes to create a curve. I'll just use the regular pen tool. Then I'll open the stroke panel to access the pressure profile. Here I can adjust the nodes to create a tapered end to my curve, or I can tap in the middle to create new nodes. To delete unwanted nodes, tap them and choose delete. And to reset the pressure profile completely, tap anywhere in the profile box and select reset pressure. Now that we've seen all the pen tool modes and some of the node tool features, I'll tap on the zoom button to view the finished piece. One more thing to know, you can view the makeup of your artwork with the x-ray mode. To find it, open the navigator panel and tap across the main view mode to view the different modes. You can also use the split view mode. X-ray mode is useful for selecting specific curves or objects within complicated artwork. To return to the normal view, just toggle across to none. So that was just a quick look at using the pen and node tools to create and edit curves in vector artwork. Thanks for watching.